You are now listening to the Backseat Critics, the movie review podcast. Welcome back to the Backseat Critics. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Andrew. He stole it again for me. That's fine. Two times in a row. And it well, I got I got to I got to keep in the spirit of uh, t- today's episode because we're talking ninety nine. I'm being I'm being a little naughty today. A little spicy. <laughs> you, you stick your finger on me, it's gonna sizzle. <laughs> spicy. <laughs> ah, hot. Oh, that type of hot. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. I don't know if that's muy caliente or where we at there. It's it's whatever we whatever we need. Okay. Is it cool ranch hot? Oh, it's cool ranch. Cool ranch. <sighs> By the way, um, before we dive into this uh, week's episode, if you would like to not send us a dollar at dollar sign hero Bob to no receive dollar. a picture of Bob, you can also like us. Oh, what? They or can follow like us. us. They can follow us. Yeah, if you if you hit subscribe on YouTube, and you send us a message. Oh, or if you follow us on Instagram. Oh, we will send you a picture. We will send you a picture of Mr. Bob. Of Mr. Bob. Nothing, nothing, nothing naughty. Nothing naughty here. <laughs> but we are being Just, naughty. <laughs> <laughs> Just Mr. Bob. Mr. Bob. You go, easy peasy. Now, if what what happens though? Just out of curiosity for the people out there, just case, just in case they didn't know, if they send us a dollar and follow us, picture a Mister RJ. Whoa, <laughs> that escalated quickly. Yeah, and and I do not like this. <laughs> <laughs> so if you if you send a dollar to dollar sign hero Bob, and you follow us, you get or two sub- pictures of Bob, <laughs> you get. Two pictures of Bob and a picture of RJ. And a picture of Andrew. No. Oh, yeah. If you send us five dollars. Oh, this is getting too complicated now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to make it easy for you here, actually, really quick. All you got to do, you can follow us. You get a picture of Bob. You send us a dollar. You get a picture of Bob. You can you do, do both. both. You, you get, get two, two pictures, pictures of Bob, Bob. And that's it. That's it right there. You get stupid two pictures simple. of Bob. Stupid, stupid simple. You can do one or the other. You can still get a picture of Bob. If you do both, you get two pictures of Bob. Totally worth it. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, we have a satisfied customer. Oh, we do. Yeah. Um, do you, do you want to jump in and tell us your experience with the service? I paid a dollar and got a picture. Are you happy with that? It was a great picture. That's enthusiasm, folks. That is five-star service. Eat your heart hot. out. I'm not the only one that's hot after seeing that picture. Nope. We should be on hot <laughs> ones coming up. Backseat critics on hot ones. Yep. Speak that into existence. Andrew's going to die. I might. <laughs> you will after the first one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this week we're talking about 2023's The Naughty Nine. Naughty Nine. Which is a kid's movie, despite mm-hmm. its title. Despite the title. Um... About kids who steal from Santa, played by Donald Glover. Donald Glover is Santa Claus. I don't want to steal from Donald Glover. I'm pretty sure... Danny Glover. That's right. Donald Glover is the guy <laughs> from... Uh, Atlanta? From Community, Atlanta, ATL, yep, Spider-Man. He is a great actor. He's Childish Gambino. But we are talking about Danny Glover, Angels in the Outfield... Danny Glover. Lethal Weapon. Lethal Weapon, Danny Glover. Sorry to bother you. Sorry to bother you, Danny Glover. Yeah. Look him up. Death at a funeral, Danny Glover. Six weddings and a funeral, Danny Glover. Dan, me. Pirates of the Caribbean, not Danny Glover. Not Danny Glover. Not Danny Glover. No. Better movie. If he was in it, <laughs> so I was going to say <laughs> okay. Lethal Weapon 3. Okay. We, we we established Danny Glover is in the lethal of the weapons for most of them. I'm pretty sure they've done. But anyway, Danny off. Glover plays Santa in this for about two seconds. I'm pretty sure on his contract he said, "I want to be sitting for all of my lines, and I'm going to have two lines max." I think he was standing when they first came in, but he didn't say anything. No, he just standing. He just snapped his fingers. Well, at the end, hey, better movie. At the end, he Danny says, Glover's. I need the ninety nine, and he gets up and starts walking. 
He said, so, he, so he, he so he delivered his line while sitting, and then stood up and walked walked out. Yeah, which was like what I said, where I'm like, he says two lines, and he has to be sitting for each one. Well, okay, fine. Be that way. That's okay. Be right. No, okay. That's fine. That's why. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're so confused right now. <laughs> I'm not confused. Like is RJ really mad or is he? No, I'm see mad. It in your eyes. You're mad. No, yeah, I'm mad. I'm hot. I'm spicy. I'm mad. You know, spicy because we're naughty nines today. Yeah, we are naughty. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward. Uh, so it's a movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> it's a Barbie doll. <laughs> Uh, it's a movie about some kids who didn't get their presents because they're jerks, and uh, they decide to steal from Santa. Yeah. And so they um, get dollar store Chris Pratt to fly them up to the North Pole. Tried their best o- Ocean's Eleven. Uh, yeah. Basically, every like 90s heist movie got their gymnast, got the getaway driver, and uh, got their tech, tech support. Tech yeah. Game. And uh, stole from Santa. So you know, this is actually probably the first heist movie where I s- I've watched where the the tech di- tech person doesn't die. I feel like the majority of them, the tech person dies, besides like Italian Job in Ocean's, Ocean's Eleven. Yeah. yeah, but I feel like if you watch like Mission Impossible, tech guy always dry- dies. Oh, in like the first five minutes, tech guy dies. <laughs> exactly. There's always a tech guy that that dies at some point. Well, actually, uh, Mission but- Impossible's got um, God, what's his name? It's Ving Rhames. Ving Rhames. Oh yeah, I think he's the other guy. Okay, yeah, I was off on that one. Yeah, so no, he's bad. he's the tech guy in Mission Impossible. He doesn't die. Okay, I just feel like most of the time tech guys die. I don't know why. I just have that feeling. Okay, it's in my gut. It's just tech guys die. Tech guys die. Don't be the tech guy. Don't be the tech guy. We're gonna die on Wednesday night. Yeah, we are. <laughs> we, we we gotta fight back. Fight back. And you can do that by following us and getting a free picture of Bob. <laughs> Uh, you know, and uh, be sure to tell all your friends, share this, and uh, you know, collect them all. Collect all the pictures of Bob, 50 of them to be exact out there. 50 pictures of Bob, 50 pictures of Bob Wilden, and we've got them all. We got Red Vine Bob, we got we got Salmon Shirt Bob, we got Angry Face Bob, we got Thinking Bob, we got Bob's. <laughs> We got Bob's out the wazoo. And you know what? We're doing everything we can to not talk about this movie. There might be a second edition of Bob's coming out. A second wave of Bob's eventually. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Maybe. You know, it's 99. Like you said, they go to the North Pole to steal some stuff from Santa. To steal back the presents that they should have gotten. Should have. Should have. Er, kind. I mean, they were air, on the air naughty quotations list. There. Oh, yeah. qu- air quotations. Because they're, they're pretty not bad kids so wait so when we were introduced to the tech guy yeah we walk into his room and he was a good kid and he got the computer from santa yeah yeah um so he's got like cryptid stuff all over his room did you notice that yeah about the naughty list well he's got like bigfoot and mothman and i think there's some Mm -hmm. other thing just floating around in there yeah i saw that yeah all the little news articles and those well, sorts of things. He has like eight and is deep in there. Well, he created that algorithm to figure out the naughty list and somehow he didn't know what he was doing. I, yeah. He is smarter than me. I like how he's like, oh yeah, so I made this algorithm that captures data from all across the internet that uh, where, where kids um, are complaining that they didn't get the presents that they wanted for Christmas. This is proof of the naughty list. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's causation. I think that's just like, it just happened to be that way. What about the kid that's in poverty, you know, and doesn't have, their parents can't afford the $500 game system. Yeah. Or what is, what about the spoiled brat kid that wants like five big item things, Santa gets him one. Yeah. He's still on the good list, but like, he's just upset that he's just upset that he didn't get all five. But yeah, no, that's the, there's there's good thoughts here. Okay, what's your uh, go for it? What's your favorite scene? Uh, favorite scene? I like how the elves were wilding out. Oh, the party! Oh yeah, the little elf rave. They had like this big DJ in the middle of the room, like you'd see like a, I guess a rave, quote unquote. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're just like congoing out. They're just 
dancing, they're drinking. They're partying. For as big as the village is, that's not as many elves as I thought there would be. No. Like there's maybe, what, 50 elves in that room? And that village looked like it could hold a thousand people. Yeah. And some of those little elf houses look like multifamily kind of stuff. Where it's like, like they're pretty sizable. Well, some of those elves are weren't like you know. No, normally, you see a stereotypical elf, and it's like a little kid, you know, or it's yeah, it's a smaller, smaller sized person, creature, whatever you want to call an elf race. I don't know. Yeah, um, it's usually smaller, but there's like full size. Like I'm pretty sure some of those people are taller than me. Some that are there are elves. some tall elves, and this is like flashback to what was it the greatest Christmas present. Greatest Christmas present ever. Yeah. 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 yeah where they the, got the basketball player. The NBA Larry, player, John Larry Sally. Bird. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> John Sally and the guy who does Patrick Starr's voice. Yeah. Both of them. And they were super tall. It's kind of like there that here, there's some super tall. They were very tall. Tall elves in this. And there are also a lot of short elves. Yeah. I mean, those were more the younger elves. As you saw at the rave, like they were, they were more kids. Yep. At the rave. So does that mean like the older elves are like, is it kind of like the real world where like, okay, the kids they go reproduce. party? Sure. They have like their own little community going on, but where the kids go party and play and stuff and old people are like, ah, we just did 300 and I got to sleep this off. <laughs> yeah. Was it 352 days? 300, I don't know how many days are in a year right now. 365. So 364 days. We worked for Santa and so now I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> I'm done. Oh, and and as the jackal suggested earlier, like that's it took at least two days to get set up a day for like the flight and and travel and stuff over. Yeah. So that's three days of them potentially partying. Potentially. So that's a lot of partying. And the other, the older people are just sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> the older elves are just sleeping. And they're like, eh, I'm done. Got to rest up for next year. Got to make it so I can bank my cookies and milk. I feel like I'd be like split. I'd be partying a little bit, but then I'd be like sleeping hard. I think it depends on my age at the time. And also... I'm just thinking right now. Oh, right now? Right now. I might go say hi at the party and the rest of the time I'm sleeping. (laughs) (laughs) Like, hey guys, hey, yeah, RJ here. No, I'm going to be the guy who's going to try to climb up to the DJ booth. Oh, yeah? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I want to get milk wasted. (laughs) Give me the eggnog. Where them chocolate chip cookies at? <laughs> Santa Bear have my cookies. <laughs> He's going to have an angry elf on his hand. Are those cookies I can have? We're about to turn to some gnomes up in here. That's when they get really mad. Elves? Yeah. Do, how much do you think... Do you think there's elves that are like kicked out? Probably. For climbing up on the DJ and... <laughs> Getting milk wasted. Just getting and, milk wasted and just eating everything that looks like a cookie. Yep. Yep. Hundred percent. Also, like that, that there was one inflatable thing in the whole town. Why do they have inflatables in the North Pole? It's like they've they've got a okay. I pointed this out during the movie, but they've got a statue of Santa that looks kind of like the Saddam Hussein statue, and it draw is made of like. It's just snow. loose snow. It's just yeah. loose, powdery snow. And, uh, of course, they, they knock it down. Smashes everything. After they steal from Santa's workshop, and they had this girl go on ice performing the double bars. Yeah, she's doing the these like, bars gym, gymnast moves. On melting ice, too. On these like icicles sticking out of the wall, and she's like holding onto it. I want to know why that was melting out of everything in that place. They actually showed it like melting drops on it. Mm-hmm. Like I thought that thing was going to snap on her and she was going to go just in time. It's weird because the whole time they were in that cavern, they were like, it's a deep within a cave. So like it should be kind of colder than everything else. Yeah. So like, why is it melting in there? And also like that drawbridge that they have to get across that she's doing a little, she does a little gymnast move to get to the other side to pull the drawbridge which I want to know how do the elves get across in the first place to that lever. But also, like, why are you building a drawbridge on something in a room where everything seems to be melting? 
because once everything melts, that drawbridge is falling because it's built on the ice. If I remember right, this is a lever, right? It's yeah. There's a lever. So, a couple things here. Why do you need a gymnast? Yep, grappling hook, some sort of rope, tie it. You know, lasso. Why didn't you get like a? I mean, I get it. They're probably in what we assume to be some sort of New Yorkish type city. Yeah, when I looked it up, it was like Montreal's where it was filmed, but... Th- they try to play it off as like New York or something along those lines. Yeah. Why? I mean, I guess you don't have like a like a cowboy <laughs> that's readily available, but why recruit? Why not recruit know. like a, a farmhand? You could probably lasso that thing, pull it. A lot safer. Yeah. A lot safer. Why couldn't you... Um, well, I don't think they they knew what they were getting into. Because again, he's just like right off the bat, he sees the blueprint kind of satellite photo of the village, just aerial. There's no way that he's seen inside of a cave, and he's just like, "Yeah, we need this. We need that. We need, we need this." Gymnast. Yeah, and it's like, what? Well, what I want to also basing this off of like the getaway driver. Sure, I kind of get animal ringer. Wrangler, I'm not sure what you're getting reindeer, at there. Reindeer, reindeer, I get it. I mean, maybe, yeah. but how do you know that there's not better modes of like transportation up there. I mean, they obviously had snowmobiles. They obviously had snowmobiles. I, I mean, by the way, the elves are driving snowmobiles like crazy in here. To get across the bridge, they could have also used a long jumper in track mm-hmm. easier. Mm-hmm. And then also, if you're being in a city like that, there's probably somebody that knows parkour. Also, like, would you want to parkour off ice? No, but I mean, parkour people can jump pretty far. Also, I feel you like gotta yell I feel like you wouldn't need do it. like anyone who's trained with, you know, throwing a lasso, to get a lasso around that. Like, make the lasso big enough. You can do that. I think anyone could do that. T- just take some practice it's, runs. It's ten feet away. If that, you spin the lasso, you throw it. You've got a pretty good chance that you're going to hook it. Now, in all honesty, I'd barely make it. That jump? I'd barely make it. No, that's what I'm saying. Lasso. Yeah, I know. I can I can. I feel like it. any one of those kids could have lassoed it. I'm jumping 11 feet, and that's max. <laughs> oh, please. I'm, I, can jump, I, can, I can jump 20. <laughs> I can jump 20. If it's going downhill. I, I can borderline fly. On a decline. But yeah. I would... Um, there's some questionable things. A kid hides in a, a glass ornament. Like, that's because a clear glass that kid ornament. That spins most of the movie hiding. Yeah, he does. That's He's a, so wasted. The the cryptid um, tech kid. That doesn't die. He makes it. He, he survives. Um, he goes into a control room yeah. and hides in a grate the whole movie. And then when he's not in there, he hides in a glass orb that he then, during the kind of final and, getaway, rolls down a hill. And knocks over the loose snow Santa Claus. Yeah. Which really upsets the, the elf um, cult members. In the, and they're grown elves, grown men elf. And it gets knocked over on them and they did proceed to run them over with a sleigh. Mm-hmm. And they're still alive after being ran over. No, they're trampled. not. They're not. Those are different elves that run after them. They're dead. Well, we would hope so, but nope. Same amount came out. Do you do you think like the elves here are like invincible? Like they live forever? Sure. They have Santa's blood. Santa puts blood inside of the cookies that he makes and gives them. <laughs> what? This is just a theory. Am I wrong here? That's how he gets them to live forever. Is he All right, it? folks, uh, prepare yourselves for uh, another backseat critic theory. Hot take. And uh, he gives them these magical cookies that make them last forever. And they just live forever? Yeah. So instead of getting some sort of He's like, serve me, disease, make some toys and some cell phones. And I'll give you these cookies. I'll make you live forever. And some snakes. How are they getting this stuff? Are they stealing it from elsewhere? How are they making the snake? Like that that looked like a brand name game system in that world. Not ours. A terrible It looked like from the late nineties. Yes. It looks like a bad early two thousands. Um bad but it's game like, system. They've got they've got the bow constrictor there. They've got the game system that looked like a name brand. How is Santa and his elves getting all that stuff? Are they stealing it? 
Well, according to Fat Man, they have a government contract. <laughs> I'm aware, Fat Man. <laughs> <laughs> they have a government contract. Now, in this case, it may, we, you know what? I think 99.2 will disclose this information because it looks like Santa gets into some trouble. Do you think 99.2 is going to be called the Naughty 10? That would be smart if they did that. Play off of the oceans since, there. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be smart if they did. A little high five to them. Yeah. Uh, weird to see uh, Danny Glover as Santa. Um, I'm it. here for it. I love it. I kind of want to see more of that. Wish he was more in more in the movie. Yeah, he's in all of five minutes if tops, that. and he's got two lines. If that. He's got two lines where it's like, he preaches to them about being something good or being whatever, good. and then the last being of like, I need you guys. I'm in trouble. Debt collectors are coming after me. So I actually have a quick question. Different subject really quick here. So there's actually a scene where inside the movie... So inside the movie, there's a scene where they are getting away. And the, the kids are jumping from a sleigh to an airplane. Yeah. During the scene... They're down to the last kid, the the main kid, right? Mm-hmm. By the way, I feel like this jump to the airplane is as far as that jump to the. Lever. Oh, it's a lot less. It's a lot less. No. Yeah, they're right. They're up jumping next to it. up. They're jumping. True. Up. So it's more of a high jump than it is a long jump. But the distance itself is the same. Uh, disagree. Oh. Well, agree to disagree. But why? Why are you getting down to the last kid inside the sleigh and you leave all the presents and the boa constrictor inside this sleigh? <laughs> I love that they grab the boa constrictor stuff, the boa into the bag and then they stuff all of the other stuff on top of the boa. Wouldn't that boa also be like asleep? In the cold? Yeah. Wouldn't that yeah. thing be like knocked out? Isn't yeah. that what they do with like snakes when they need to put it like to sleep to put it in, like, in a cold, cold environment? Box? Yeah, I thought so. And that puts it asleep. Also as well, what do you think PETA thinks of this movie? I'm not sure. With a snake just being pushed back down into a... I feel like that snake was fake. Probably. It was a fake snake. No, it's a real boa. That thing was going to eat that kid. You see how the thing that big was? It was going to measure it out. You know how that... Like the like the story of the lady where she slept with her pet snake and the pet snake was slowly measuring her up to figure out if it could eat it or not. Eat her. Really? Yeah, she used to have this big old snake, this lady. She got eaten by a snake? I don't think she got eaten. She figured it out that the snake was trying to line her up to see if it can eat eat its owner. True story out there. Yeah, there's a story of a, some lady that would sleep with her pet snake, and the snake was slowly over time trying to figure out. I would not sleep next to a snake. I'd be afraid of that thing wrapping me up, suffocating me, then trying to eat me. But yeah, this movie. Uh, <laughs> this movie. <laughs> We're back to the classic backseat <laughs> backseat critic lines of this movie. Do you have any like what moments? I think we've just been talking about what moments the whole time. I feel like that's the case too. I don't think we've ever yeah. I think it's all been what moments. You know, props to props to the writers. Um they didn't put a whole lot of emotional baggage on the characters outside of like a couple lines. There's definitely one 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 character that had some emotional baggage and that that was the the gal who was, I think she was adopted, if I remember. Yeah, yeah, she's family. adopted into uh, a family of four. Two sets of twins or something like that? Three oh, sets? I thought it was four sets of twins. Four sets of twins. And she's the middle. Yep, she's the middle child of them. And it's, it's something crazy like that. And, oh, she's like, oh, they, they'll never know I'm gone anyways because I don't matter or whatever. And she got locked out of the house at one point. Yeah, and, yeah. and then they had the, the moment then where the um, her parents ended up missing her or something but that's the but, most emotional i think this movie gets i think so and that's a smart way to play it because the moment you put child actors into a spot where they have to be like emotional and you're resting your movie on that a lot of times the kids can't pull that well this kid you can tell that she i'd say this actor you can tell that she took the sense of i have to be more independent like she she played it off that her character had to be more independent yeah and i think that was a smart way to to, to play hand, it off. Yeah. yeah. Not be angry or anything. She wasn't, I wouldn't say per se angry. She just had the, the no, thought like process. This, of, it is what it is. Yeah. I, 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 I'm I more of an independent person. Like I have to take I'm care of myself. I'm not going to bother like trying to be a part of that. I'm just going to live my life. Yeah. Yeah. I got to take care of myself. That's a smart way to do it. Yep. 
And props to actually, so props to that kid for that acting, playing that off, I'd say. And props to actually the main actor in this movie. Uh, well, yeah. The main kid, he <gasps> he did better than most of the DCOM Go for actors it. that we've seen, I would say. Especially as of late, of those DCOMs that yeah. we have watched. I think this kid actually played it very, very well. Yeah. Um, there's not a lot to talk about here. Do you want to wrap it up? Yeah, so I'd say that this, as a kid, I think if I were a kid and I saw like Disney Channel, the commercials of this is going to be on this on a Friday night. Yeah, when you were like six, seven, eight, eight, nine, maybe even yeah. ten, I'd probably yeah. get, I'd probably get a little excited for it, you know, for a little family movie night to watch this. Yeah, just something kind of. Well, family friendly. So I think as a kid, I, I would have been if I saw once I saw the commercials of this, I'm like, oh, cool. This, this seems like a cool gimmick. Cool. Yeah, stealing from Santa. And you know, it's 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 a safe it's a safe movie for kids. 100%. It's absolutely a safe movie for kids. Um, You've got a little positive message there, which is cool. Yeah, be good. It's not it's, <laughs> it's not like ham fisted in or anything, but it's just there. Be nice. Yeah, it's it's fine. It's fine. I wouldn't say that this is a movie that I need to watch personally as an adult every year. Nope. If I have a kid, maybe I'd throw it on. But for me, this movie I'd probably rate like a like a five. Personally, I don't think it was that that great of a movie. There wasn't a lot of substance for me as an adult. The humor there was not the best. I mean, the the greatest part of this movie for me as an adult is just the little high fives to other Christmas movies. I mean, you could tell like the humor in this movie at the climax was a fart joke when they shoot an inflatable reindeer in the butt with a uh, arrow. Yep, and when it happened, you're like, mm, fart noise. That's all yeah. you can get out of that one. This movie was not for me. Yeah. Uh, definitely for kids. Would have probably loved this as a kid. Um, like you said, uh, six, six, seven, eight, I think would be kind of the age range for me, maybe nine, but it just depends. Maybe a little younger, you could watch it too. I think you're safe. There's not yeah, a lot that like, you would, I mean, you five could, is fine. Four is You could put fine. it on four. Yeah. Maybe even three. I, mean, I don't think there's anything in here that's a red flag. No, no, Nothing no, no. It's just a matter of them actually grasping the idea of what's but, going on. Yeah. I, I think that's kind of the keeping issue. Keeping their attention. Yeah, um, but yeah, I think I'm right there with you that it's like, it's going to be a five for me. There's not a lot there. It's pretty standard. It's inoffensive. They wrote the kids well enough for what it is. Um, the sets are kind of nice, to be honest. Um, and yeah, that's about it. It's not something I'm planning on rewatching. No, maybe further down the road when I have a kid, but not this time. No. Well, please don't forget to follow us. If you do, you do get a free picture of Bob right now. Free picture of Bob. Also as well, uh, if you send a dollar, a dollar to dollar sign Hero Bob on Cash App, take send a, us screenshot a screenshot to the Backseat Critics on Instagram. Yep, you yeah. get a free picture of Bob. If you do both, you get two pictures of Bob. It's fantastic. Sweet deal. Could not ask for anything better. Cannot. No, I want to make it clear. These are not risque, naughty pictures of Bob. They're just... Yes, they are. <laughs> this is Bob living his life. And with that, this has been another episode of the Backseat Critics. Goodbye. We out. <laughs> Adios. I was trying to get you to really like, follow, subscribe. Oh, yeah. And if you. Uh, oh, my gosh. It's over. <laughs> if you like what we do.